awesome. Give another hand for God, amen. I love the part where she talks about she's going to come out better than before, and then she do that walk. That walk, she be getting that walk. We didn't all been in that part of that storm, right? Where where things weren't looking good, but when the storm had cleared up and we could come walking out, we came out with that little sachet walk, amen. I love it. Amen. Give God another hand for God today, amen. Amen. All right, all right, all right. I'm happy. I'm excited. I feel like I'm on a on an assignment today to, to encourage you today. Um, I got a lot of encouragement this past couple weeks and I'm, I feel like I'm full, like I'm filled up to give you some encouragement today. So please stay with me. We're going to read the word of God today, man. I'm gonna say that again. We're going to read the word of God today. That means do not get sleepy. Don't start making yourself comfortable because there's a couple words on the screen, all right? Keep the eyes open. Please receive. I promise I won't keep you long. That's what every pastor say, right? To keep y'all thinking that every sentence is going to lead to us getting up out of here early. <laughs> Amen. We're going to start off at Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. Amen. But forget all that is nothing compared to what I am going to do. I'm going to say that again. But... Forget all. That is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am a, I am about to do something. What's the word? Do y'all see the word up there? Is it up there? It's not up there on the screen? Oh, man. I'm thinking we following. It's all right. We good. The, okay, verse 18. But forget all that it is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Ain't that something to think that something new has already begun around you, but you can't even see it yet? He said, see, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. But first off, let's say, let's start off with just that part. It says, but forget all. Everything that you knew about. Forget it all. Because it's nothing compared to what I am going to do. The title of my message is called Reset. Reset. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. Come on, y'all gotta, y'all gotta meet my energy. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you today, Father God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for not forgetting us, dear Lord. In the middle of people forgetting us, God, you haven't forgotten us because you write our names in the palm of your hand. So, Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you for every individual that's here. You know what's going on in their life. You know what's going on around them. You know what's going on that they, they, they care about, Father God. But the Bible says that you will perfect those things which concerns us. So today, Father God, we just give you all the glory, all the honor. We praise your name today, Father God. Today, dear Lord, I pray that I would decrease, that you may increase, that this would not be of me, but this would be only of you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Let the church say, amen. I went on a solo dolo trip. Amen. For those of you that don't know what a solo dolo is, that means all by my lonesome. I didn't have my beautiful wife there, nor my wonderful children. It was something that I decided to do to step out on my own. I have never done this before. This was something that was really just out of the way for me. Amen. And on my way of getting ready to do that, I looked at myself. I recorded myself as I was getting ready to get on the airplane. And I said to myself, this is going to be the first day of your new life. I didn't know what it was that I was saying, but I was prophesying into my life without me knowing it. And so for people that don't like to go out to eat by yourself, I encourage you, try it. You will find out what you don't like and you'll find out what you do like. Side note, just don't get lost into everybody that's around you, okay? And when I say that, I mean like when you marry, you be you, you like like this wonderful couple here. Y'all been married so long that your identity is one. And that's great. But I don't want to I don't want to lose myself, me personally, into everything that is my wife. I need to know who I am so I can be better for her. 
If I lose everything into her, then when she's, if she leaves or God calls her home, then who, what am I to do? I'm going to be sitting there like, I don't know how to be the father that I'm supposed to be. I don't know how to be the minister that I'm designed to be. So what should I do? So I got a way to get a chance to also know me. Find out what is it that I like. What is it that I do? I'm trying, I'm working on her to do the same thing for herself. Because when you find out who you are individually, you bring that together. Ooh. I'm trying to tell you the power that is within that union is magical. It's powerful. Amen. So I got a chance to get away for a second. And I, I wanted to show you some of the pictures that I, I felt like I was, I was caught up with so many things that was going on around me. So this is a picture from my balcony. I just wanted to be next to the ocean. I wanted to walk out on my patio and just see the ocean right there. Just, and then sometimes I would sit there early in the morning and I would watch the sunrise. And I'd just be like, oh, that's nice. And I noticed that when I was at home, in the middle of the day, my mind would be taught. I hear my thoughts. Just hear my thoughts. I don't know if anybody else go through that in the room, but I would just hear my thoughts like, you need to take care of this. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do that. That'd be in the middle of two, three in the morning. But I got a chance to get away. And when I, as I was looking at the creation that God had, had made, and I, get, I got a chance to look at it, I was just sitting there like, it was just nothing. I had no thoughts running. It was just peace. It was just, I looked at it, I said, God, you are so marvelous. Just peace. Next picture. This, this picture wasn't so much peaceful, but it was nice just to look at. All right, they had music, they had sand, and stuff that I just can't go nowhere in Grand Blanket Fine. All right, so this was part of the things that caused me to get away. But as I was getting away, I didn't realize what I was doing was I was hitting the reset button. Because there were certain things in my life that I felt had became stagnant. Stagnant. I don't know if you've ever been around something stagnant, but it stinks. And what I mean when I say stagnant is that there's no flow to it. It's just, that the word stagnant in itself says, have no current or flow. And often has an unpleasant smell as a consequence. I felt like there were things in pockets around me that were stagnant, that I didn't see a flow of it. And when you get caught up in stagnate, stagnation, I don't even know if that's a word, but <laughs> when you get caught into stagnation, you find yourself not moving. Yep. You find yourself constantly questioning everything that's around you. My job felt stagnant. You know, um, mentally, I felt stagnant. It had nothing to do with my wife or nothing to do with our marriage. But individually, I felt like I just couldn't get out of my own way. And it was unpleasant for me. It became to be unpleasant with the thoughts and the things that I saw. My vision wasn't the same. My thought process wasn't the same. The way I approached stuff, I found, I started seeing me be a little shorter. You know, sometimes you have tolerance for certain stuff, and then some stuff you just like, I ain't got no tolerance for that. Get away from me right now. I found myself just getting a little shorter, but God began to show me that there were certain things in front of me that was stagnant. So what they had to be done, what had to be done was it had to be revised. Revised is nothing in Google. It just says, have it been altered or corrected? I needed something to be altered or corrected in, in, around me to figure out what was going on. So to give you an idea of where we're going today, man, because we're going to talk about stagnant we, and why we need to be reset sometimes. This is what God gave me. Amen? Y'all woke? We still good. Amen. We are going to go to Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 18. My first one was a stagnant approach. I saw that my approach to everything was stagnant. The way that I, I move about, the way that I walked about, the way that I handled things. When I say that means that, that yes, you might see me with a shirt on, a jacket, some pants, some shoes. I throw my hat on and I go and I approach whatever it is that needed to be done. But I realized that I wasn't approaching it within God's strength. I was approaching it within Marcus' approach. There were some things that I just cannot do. And, there, and it's a lot of things that I cannot do without God being in the middle of it. And so I found out that I was doing stuff of my own strength. And that's why it became stagnant. That's why it wasn't no flow. That's why it wasn't no current to it. So as I began to do it, it became unpleasant. But God began to show me Ephesians 6 and 10. Amen. Amen. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I was trying to be strong in Marcus. 
and Mark is so called mighty power. So Mark, Marcus ain't got no power like that. You can't compare power to what you get with God, amen. So six ten, so eleven verse. Put on all God's armor, so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. I was putting on my armor. I was putting on my smell good, my cologne, my jays, my my shoes, my my jeans. My go and get a haircut, think I look good, think I'm doing my thing, and I ain't doing nothing because everything around me stagnant. Nothing is moving. I'm not progressing at nothing. Mentally nor spiritually, it feels like everything feels like it's falling right in front of me. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers of the authorities, this unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be able to still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Put it on the belt of truth. That's not this belt that I got on right now. The body armor of God's righteousness for shoes. That ain't the shoes I got on now. Put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. I was looking for peace in all the wrong places. In addition to all these people, all, the, all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. I noticed that I was trying to be strong in me and not strong in the Lord. And that's why I'm saying that sometimes we won't forget to put on our regular clothes, right? You're going to feel a breeze when you get outside if you butt naked. Okay. I'm just going to throw some different stuff out there at y'all because I don't want to follow me, right? You're going to feel some stuff if you butt naked, right? That you ain't supposed to feel. You're like, wait a minute, this feels uncomfortable, right? But how often do you leave out fully in the armor of God? You leave out butt naked spiritually every day. And you wonder, why are you coming in with things connected to you? And you like, why do I feel this way? Why is it that I was talking to the youth today about their energy? Why is it that I feel like the energy, I'm putting all this energy in stuff that does not need me. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about things that don't feed me. Oh, my boo ain't called me today. I can't believe him. I can't believe her. Who she thinks she is. But does she stop you from eating? Did she stop you from being clothed? Is it a roof over your head? Do you still got a heartbeat? Well, move on. There's other booze in the sea. Amen. You can't, you can't continue to sit there and be losing your peace over somebody that don't think about you. I remember I had this job and my manager ticked me off. I'm walking around and I'm like, she don't know who she thinks she talks to. And I realized she on vacation on the cruise. Guess what? She think about you. My peace is gone. But she enjoying peace. She got more peace on top of peace on top of peace. But they say racks on racks on racks on racks. She got peace on peace on peace on peace. But why is that? Because I'm sitting here losing mine for nothing. I used to talk to my goddaughter back. And I know you remember this. I used to talk to her about allowing somebody to be your puppet. And so when they make you mad, you just put one hand up and you put another hand up. And they just playing with you the whole time. And you just doing this, looking like an old clown if you want to. And they are cool with peace. I was allowing my peace to be taken, so my approach had to change. And how does my approach change? Now I got to put on my whole armor of God because I, don't, I no longer want stagnant areas in my life. So that's why one reason that you got to reset. I thought about something. The other day, me and Nate was getting ready to go to this um, arcade, and Nate's supposed to have this card that he could pay for his games. But Nate didn't know where he put the card at. So I'm all upset because in my mind, as I'm thinking, my eye, I'm not going to have to pay for this. Nate didn't know where the card was at. So I'm, all, I'm, I'm hot about it. Like, nah, this is an extra 20 dollars I got to spend, right? Point being, though, is Nate not one time that ever took his shoes off and said, I guess we ain't going. <laughs> Nate looked at me as he's still fully getting dressed. And like that, I don't know where it's at. Put this hat on and everything. You know why he was able to do that? Because he had trust that dad was going to cover it no matter what. 
There was things that I just found out I did not trust God to take care of, no matter what. So therefore, I didn't put my coat on. I didn't put my hat on. I didn't put my shoes on. And my whole approach came to my situation, became stagnant because I stopped moving and said, if I can't do it, it's not going to get done. Instead of looking at the mighty power of my father. Amen. I said, I said, man, Nate, you taught me something. I didn't tell him that to this moment, but I was hot. Like, I got to spend some extra money. And he talking about, I don't know where is it, Dad. And he still putting this stuff on. Man, kids will teach you some stuff about yourself. I promise you. So we just got that talk about stagnant approach. The next one is going to be stagnant speech. All right. This is why we need to reset sometimes. God is doing a new thing. And it's time for us to reset to see what is it that God is doing. We need to see what is it that we continue to keep doing that is just not it. The seasons change. Amen. So you ain't still wearing a winter coat when it's 90 degrees outside in the summer. You have to be in to take that coat off and realize you got to address according to the temperature. Sometimes with the with spiritually, the temperature is changing and we still operating in one season language. And it's another language that's going on in another season. Amen. So I saw this one. I was like, oh, my God, this one really preached to me because I had never read the scripture before. James three, verse two. We're going to go down to the 12th verse. It says, indeed, we all make many mistakes. Can anybody else say you made some mistakes in here? For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out the both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or, or a grapevine produce figs? No, you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Our speech can become so stagnant that it stinks. Have you ever talked to somebody that is a victim every time you talk to them? I'm not saying that you don't have past trauma issues. Please don't sit there and say, oh, I'm done with him. He don't care about what I've been through in my life. But what I am saying is that sooner or later, your past trauma should be a testimony. It should be something just like Kim was dancing to that you should come out of it stronger than before. It should not be something that you lay around and roll around and wrap yourself in, go to sleep and wake up to it again. And every time somebody talk to you, you're on the phone or you're in person crying about what happened to you 30 years ago. You got to give it to God and move on. Because if you don't, your whole lifestyle becomes stagnant. Your speech becomes stagnant. The way that you see yourself, your image of yourself is stagnant because you won't even see how strong you are now because of that issue. You will see that same victim that was did wrong by whoever it was that did you back then. There's a time that we got to move on past that speech. We got to be able to sit back and say, I can't live there no more. This has to be my testimony now. It can't be something that keeps me stagnant time to hit the reset on that speech amen. can no longer sit there and lay there in that same speech anymore amen also it, got, it can't be the point that you always got to tell somebody else's business too because if you that bored to be telling somebody else's business you got to get you a life all right that ain't so that ain't something that's prophetic that's just logical you know what I'm saying? You can't keep talking about everybody else big girl did you hear what happened no I don't want to hear what happened why don't you tell me something that's going on with you 
What's going on with your life? Oh, you stagnant. That's what's going on. Oh, you smelling unpleasant right now. You ain't doing that with your life. Okay, I see that. And when you start shutting that stuff down, because if you starting to listen to it, then guess what's going to happen to your, your ear? It's going to become stagnant. And now you got to reset. Reset is what you just tell the person, oh, 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 you, you on that? I'm going to talk to you later. I can't do this with you no more. I can't deal with that. I told you when I went on my vacation and the reset hit, my tolerance became a little bit more like, eh, ain't got no time for that. If that's all we going to talk about, I got to go because I'm on to something else. The opposite word of stagnant is booming. It's booming. Booming is when the economy is just exploding. How many times have you talked to somebody that's like, man, I'm getting up out of Flint. Ain't nothing going on in Flint. And then they go to Houston or they go to Atlanta or they go to Carolina and then they go and get them a Flint job. <laughs> a job you could have got right here in Flint that's cheaper in a lower economy, but you're going to go to a booming city to still have a stagnant vision. I like that. I like that. I ain't going to. Because I see it all the time. Oh, man, I'm getting a body. Ain't nothing in Flint. Okay, what you doing, man? I'm over here stocking at Walmart. <laughs> now, if you got something lined up, I ain't mad at you. But don't leave somewhere where you can afford to live at to go somewhere where you got to have the government assist you because you are working a same type of a job that you could have got flat out right here. I know it's kind of real for y'all right now. Some of y'all sitting there like, mm, I ain't feeling that. <laughs> you going somewhere with that, Minister Mergen. I ain't feeling that. Stagnant. Stagnant. What about this? Oh, please don't throw nothing at me up here on this one. Oh, remember, I got this from God. Okay? This ain't, this ain't nothing I came up with. I'm just a vessel. What about having stagnant prayers? What about having a stagnant prayer? You've been praying for the same thing for 25 years and counting. 25 years and counting. you like, God, won't you do it? God, won't you do it? You ever thought that God already did it and you just missed it? Let's go to Luke 18. We're going to go to 1 through 8. Amen. So this is a parable of the persistent widow. It's what this is about with Jesus talking to his disciples. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city. He said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of the city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her consistent request, her constant request. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to those, to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off, I tell you, he will grant justice to them, what's that word? Quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Keep praying for the same thing, praying for the same thing, praying for the same thing. And then you say, God is not hearing me. God just don't hear me. Is God real? I remember the other day I was driving, I was, this was years ago. Because I was on a big tennis shoe kick. It's a huge tennis shoe kick. It was like every month I had to give me some, some shoes, right? And uh, I had one nine months straight, bought nine pairs of tennis shoes. Every month, a new shoe was coming out. I had to get them. They averaged between $250, $275 a piece, right? Every month. I, oh, I want those. Oh, I want those. Oh, I want those. So I'm driving down the street and I'm like, God, I need some more money. I'm like, life is life in, finances ain't financing. I'm like, I need an increase. I lie to you not. As I'm driving down the street, God showed me my closet. And I saw J's, 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 J's. And it averaged up to be right around 
eighteen to eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars I had spent in nine months on tennis shoes. I was praying for increase, but what I should have been asking God for was wisdom over the increase. Remember, the language changes with seasons. So sometimes you pray in a certain prayer, and you pray, and you pray, and God is answering the prayer, but you need to now add a different, like a different area of that prayer. So God, now that you've given me this increase, Lord, I, I thank you for my 70 cent raise, or my dollar raise, or my $2 raise, or my $5 raise, but God, now I, I have more money, but I don't want to create more bills. I don't want to create more debt. So God, give me wisdom over this, and show me how to, to be more financially a better steward over my finances. Yeah. That's where we got to get to it. Because other than that, your prayers is just stagnant. And you are wondering, why is it that you continue to keep sinking? He's answering the prayers quickly, but you just ain't seeing. What about this? Lord, give me a sign if I should talk to him again. <laughs> Lord, Lord, is that you, God? Like, like Lord, give me a sign. And then also, he'd be like, I can't believe he ain't called me. He got some nerve. And so then what you do, you send a little text message. Oh, you forgot who are you supposed to be at? You forgot who you're supposed to be talking to? And all of a sudden, they like, hey, baby, well, I guess that's my sign. He called, Lord. <laughs> God didn't answer it. He answered it. But you chose to do your own thing. Like, I don't like this answer, God. Because they always say, be careful what you pray for. Because when you pray, you better be ready to make sure your heart is ready to hear that thing. Make sure your heart ready to live out that thing. Because when your heart, when it happens, and you sitting there like, Lord, Lord, why? Why, God? Me and my wife, we was driving to Port Hero yesterday, enjoying ourselves, had a date night. And, uh, and this song by Carl Thomas came on called, I Wish I Never Met Her. And while I'm sitting there, I started remembering this date, this girl I used to kick it with back in the day. And I was so upset. Like, I was telling her, I said, man, I, said, I was hurt back in the day off this song. Like, this song, everybody be hearing it like, they be like jamming to it. I be sitting there like, girl did me wrong. Like, I can't believe it. And so when, when we had the breakup we had back in the day, I was sitting in there just crying, listening to this old sad tale song. But God has something better in store for me. And sometimes you can't see that in the middle of it. So then you go and you start praying like, Lord, if this is it, you know, show me this. God showing, God showing, but you don't like what God is showing. You don't like that reflection that God is giving you. And God is sitting there saying, but I'm trying to prepare you for something because this is going to slow you down. And this is going to cause you to become stagnant. 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 When you're asking for wisdom, James 1, 5 through 6 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally. And a braid of night. A braid of night means to rebuke, criticize, find fault. And it shall be given to him. So when you're asking for God for wisdom, trust. I'm trying to tell you, I've been asking God. I remember First Lady prayed for me to have wisdom. I put it on a prayer request about eight, nine years ago because I realized I wasn't operating in wisdom at all. And I was, I was, and she started, and when I read that scripture and then she started praying over it, things started to make sense. And then it's funny because when you're operating in wisdom, when you're around people that don't make sense, you start getting a little annoyed with them. Like, why don't you get that? Like, that, it just makes sense. But you pray for something that for God to give you that they didn't ask for. You know what I'm saying? So God will answer your prayers quickly. So if you, I just want you to take a little side note on your way home and start thinking about certain stuff you have been praying for and then take a, what they call that, like an inventory. Take an inventory and see. Let me tell God didn't answer that. Okay, I did my own thing on that one. That's why I don't see the fruits of that labor right there. Look at the money that you all are making. Even though inflation, thank you, Holy Spirit, even though inflation is going like this, so is God. God ain't going like this while inflation is going like that. God is still providing every chance you get. So that's one thing. And when you put your trust in God, like I said, before I went to my reset, I was trying to do everything in my power. But once I hit that reset and I began to see the things of God and I could walk in the things of God, I could hear God's voice and, and listen to his wisdom. Everything for me began to go like this. I was no longer stagnant. Even though inflation going like this, it's like actually inflation is going like this and God is going like this. 
because he's still constantly providing over the inflation. I got way more than I can even imagine. And at the same time, you can still look. You'd be like, how can you afford that? How can you afford that? God. God. Yes. Almost done with you. Almost done. The next part of my a stagnant that I want to address is a stagnant vision. Stagnant vision. These are certain things. Remember, these are things that has to be revised when you reset. So we didn't have approach. We didn't have, let me go back. We didn't have approach. We didn't have speech and prayer. I thank you, sister. Appreciate you. All right. Now we're going into vision. Vision. I want to show you this picture. Picture you are in a city, right? And while you're in this city, this is a new city that you went to. And they got, you know, you go to these cities, they got the, all these big old buildings, right? And so you're standing at the bottom of this building and you might just be like, wow, this is a huge thing. You kind of turn around and you're looking all around and you just see all these big buildings. And sometimes it could even feel a little bit overwhelming. But then you go to your room at the hotel that you're going to stay in. And let's say that you, you stay on the 20th, the 25th, the 30th floor. And once you get up to that floor, you get a different vision. You get a different perspective. At the first vision, the first vision might look actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an analogy. The first vision, go back to the first vision for me. The first vision could be like what your problems look like. It looks like it's overwhelming. It looks big. It looks too big for you to be able to do on your own. How in the world can I deal with this? Go to the next picture again. But when you trust in God, God changes the vision of your perspective. The building is still there. The problem is still there. But when you look at it through the lens of God, the power that you have, it changes to the point that you say, this is doable. Yeah. I could do this. Yeah. This ain't that bad. This ain't that hard to handle. And that's what a stagnant vision, go back to the first one for me. The stagnant vision looks like you're just going to stay right there. You can't see nothing else. This problem is waiting on me. I wake up in the morning, I see it. I go to sleep, I see it. I, I, I go to work, I see it. Then sometimes those problems even call you while you're at the job. They call co uh, collectors. You know what I'm saying? They call like, hey, Mr. Johnson, are you still there? You be like, no, Mr. Johnson here, you know, and you hang up the call. But the problems is still there. But when you pray, yes. and you go to God on that problem, and then you change it again, go to the next one for me. And you go to the problem, and you look at it, you say, oh, that problem ain't nothing. Yes. I'm going to conquer that in the morning. God, I'm glad that I ain't even got to worry about it, because it is already in your hand. Yes. I love the fact that we have um, a, 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 the ultimate reset. The ultimate reset is God himself. When you come from out of yourself, you can hit that button and say, this ain't a, I can't do this, God. You, I, I got to give it to you, God. I'm tagging you in, God. I hear you. And God said, I've been waiting on it. You didn't even have to tag me in. I've been here the whole time. I was trying to take it over, but you thought you was going to do this on your own, my did you? Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So Habakkuk 2 and 3, amen? Habakkuk 2 and 3. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. I'm going to say that again for you, because some of y'all right now are dealing with stagnant visions, and you don't know if it's going to actually come. But God is telling you already, this vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Right now, when I look at this vision of the church, yeah, we got empty seats. So? 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 Because it's coming. Wait patiently. I don't care how many years it's been. Don't even worry about that. Some people had to be weeded out. I'll say it for you, Pastor. I'll say it for you, Pastor. Some people was full of mess and had to be weeded out. And if anybody hear the message and they take an offense to it, you might have been the mess. Amen? Because I didn't say no names. You know, because I love a lot of people that left her. But the bottom line is, we are where we are. God is going to do what he's going to do. It's going to come when it's supposed to come. So wait patiently. Don't give up. 
God got something in store for you. He knows what your vision is. He knows what your purpose is. Your purpose has not been delayed. It's not being delayed. It's not being questioned. It's not sitting there and saying, well, maybe, Kimmy, we weren't supposed to do this. Maybe you went to the wrong city. It doesn't matter what city. It doesn't matter what side of Flint we in. Just wait. Be patient. Make sure that when you open up your mouth, like we talk about a stagnant speech, make sure that when you open up your mouth, you lift up your pastor. Yeah. Don't talk against your pastor, but lift up your pastor. Just because everybody in here ain't meant to be a pastor. So don't be at home talking about if it was me, I woulda, I woulda, I shoulda, he should be doing. That ain't your job. Stay out of that lane, because once you get into that lane, you're going to be flirting with the enemy right there. And now you're going to be part of that mess that needs to leave, amen? Because the bottom line is, who is supposed to be here is here. This is the foundation of Master's Touch. We are going somewhere. Hold on strong. Wait patiently. It's coming. It's coming, amen? It's coming. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the last part that I'll give you is rebuild. We don't went from reset to revise to rebuild. We saw the things that we needed to revise. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I'm not saying everything applied to everybody in this room of everything that was there, because I know it applied to me. I first am the eater of it. I saw what needed to be reset, and God is showing me how to do it right now. But as far as the rebuild, it's time to rebuild that vision. It's time to rebuild that approach. It's time to rebuild that speech. It's time to rebuild that prayer. Begin to see what season in it that you are in and how what, what is it that you're supposed to pray for and what is it that you're supposed to add to it. I look at it like a, a, a pot of stew. There are certain stews that need certain type of seasons in it. Every season doesn't go into every stew. So you need to figure out what type of stew is it that you're making and then figure out what seasons it is that's going to bring the right savory to that, that pot. Amen? Sometimes we are adding the wrong seasons to the wrong stews. You, every stew don't need red pepper in it. Every, every stew don't have no lemon pepper in it, amen? There's some stuff that you just can't throw in everything. But praise God that we just hold tight and hold on to the things of God and continue to seek him. You will begin to see where he has for you in store. Amen. Give God a hand. It's time for us to go from stagnant to booming. Yeah. Time to come from stagnant to booming. I can't deal with no stagnant around me because I'm booming. If you're looking for, for a person to invest in, you mean to invest in something that's booming. I'm booming right now. I can't, I'm not going to speak for y'all. You got to speak for yourself. But I'm booming. When I go to work, I'm booming. When I'm at home, I'm booming. When I'm on the phone, I'm booming. When I'm at the gym, I'm booming. Wherever I go, I'm booming. I am the economy that is, is an economic, is growth. Wherever you see me, you're going to see growth. Wherever you hear me talk at, it's going to be growth. I'm only going to speak into people's life, and I'm never going to pull nothing out of your life without planning something into your life. Because where I go is booming. It's booming. And I thank you, Lord, because we have a booming God. That's the only way you can boom. You got to have a booming God. Whatever source you pull from, you can sit here and grab a, a stereo system and plug it into the wall. But if ain't no electricity coming out the wall, it ain't booming. You can't spark it. But where I'm plugging myself into has got to be the things of God, amen. And that's where I get my boom from. I love it. I love it. Praise God. Praise God. So I want to pray for y'all real quick before we get up out of here. Because I hope that you got something today. I hope, I hope that some people are seeing some stuff to reset. It's time to reset some stuff in our life, amen? If you feel that there is something in your life that feels stagnant, it's just something that's just not, it's not going the way that you thought it would go. It's not doing what you thought it would do. I ask that you raise your hand. Mm, my God, my God. If you feel like you're spiritually stagnant, that you feel like you just don't know what's, what's going on on the inside of you. As that you raise your hand. My Lord. Mm. I'm going to pray for you today, man.
pray for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, oh God, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you for this word that you have given us. Oh, Father God, I thank you for opening our eyes to the areas that it smells unpleasant. To the areas, Father God, that is just stagnant. It's just not moving. It's not doing what we thought it would do. Those that raise their hands in her, Father God, they are your sons and daughters. And so, God, I ask today, dear Lord, that you would touch them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Dear Lord, I ask, Father God, that you will open up their eyes and renew a new vision on the inside of them. Renew a new hunger on the inside of them, Father God. A speech, Father God, that they never even heard them open their mouth and say before, Father God. I ask, dear Lord, that you would give them a new booming speech, Father God. A speech that sounds good to your ears, Father God. An approach that looks good to your eyes, Father God. Help us, Father God, to no longer pray stagnant prayers, Father God, but to see where we ultimately are, Father God, to know the you that you said you knew when we were still in our mother's womb, Father God, to become that you, Father God. Dear Lord, I ask, Father God, that you would just begin to mold our areas of our life that is stagnant, Father God. Help us to know how to, to pull the plug up and let that water drain out of there. Help us to know what to remove, how to remove it. And God, I pray, dear Lord, that after you reveal it to us, we will have the heart to actually do it. Not to go against what you're blessing us with, Father God, but have the heart, the desire to really say, no longer will this part of my life be stagnant. No longer will my speech be stagnant. No longer will my prayers be stagnant. No longer will my vision be stagnant. No longer will my approach be stagnant. But Father God, that everything that I would do, I would look to you and I will move only in the might of you, Father God. And that I will be able to do the things that you have called for me to do is my prayer for everybody in this room today. And so for those that are watching online, I pray for them as well. That there will be no more stagnation in their life as well. No more unpleasant smells in their life, but they will begin to smell it, begin to see it, begin to address it, Father God, because you've already given them the power to do so. And we thank you today, Father God. If there is anybody, Father God, that may have been lost, Father God, or, or begin to, to, to wonder if they even have a chance to even allow you to hear their prayer. Father God, I pray today, dear Lord, that they will receive you in their hearts. So I would do a prayer and you can repeat after me. Say, Father God, I repent for all of my sins. I ask that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that you sent your only begotten son to die for me and my sins. God, now I am a child of God. I receive you as my father and savior and most important my lord in jesus name we pray amen you are dismissed